Hi Razmanites, just a quick intro before the intro here, as this is old stock footage that's been ready since Christmas of 2011, and I'm a horrible person for not getting it up before now, but it was just a case where so many things were happening, mo mostly my job at Handy Enterprises Inc., which of course I'll get into details about them in a minute, as that's another reason that I had to slap this intro before the intro but because it's all stock footage I just wanted to simply remind everybody that the only reason I didn't redo this for the rest of this series or redo these sorry for the rest of the series is because I'm of the old school belief that a review is never as good as you did it the first time when you first watch something and then go and review it. And even though this was my second full-time viewing of the Dollhouse TV series, I still feel like my reviews stand up well and if I redid them, they wouldn't. So just please keep in mind that the reason you're seeing an old room set up with an old mic and my old camera model is just because I felt like I was bringing you the best option possible for the remainder of this series. Otherwise, I would have redone it all for the remainder. And because I didn't choose to redo everything for the remainder, I also need to remind you of the official sponsors of this program and channel, Indian Enterprises Inc., your productivity and communication specialist. All company contact information is down below in the description box. I am currently in the middle of a 200 unique person growth challenge. So if you want to help me earn a $200 bonus by year's end, please go and subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow and like all of the social media. And also if you're interested in becoming a full YouTube partner through my network full screen, if you meet all the criteria, you can do so by clicking my referral link, which is also down below in the description box. Now, on to the remaining television show portion of Dollhouse Season 2. And then when we get to the comic arc, you'll see new content once again. Meaning the Yeti microphone. How you doing, Rasmonites? Dollhouse Season 2 continues as I review Episode 8 entitled A Love Supreme. Today, on the Razman's Reality. Love Supreme is a very, very dark and depressing and very, very sad and obviously intense episode. After failing to get anything out of Echo from her prolonged absence and torturing her by isolating her and not giving her treatments, Adele finally gives up and puts her back in the field. and. Meanwhile, Topher has told Echo and everyone else that Echo's headaches are just in her mind. She has a perfectly clean bill of health. So, the first engagement that Echo has upon returning is one of her long-term engagements with a guy. It's a romantic engagement. And early on, in the episode, actually the first scene that we see in the episode kind of got ahead of myself there, sorry but the very first scene in the episode is this very same guy who has supposedly ordered this session with Echo and he's talking to another guy about his deep 
a deep love for a woman that doesn't exist, how he spent a fortune on this woman who doesn't exist. And he says, it's so sad and so pathetic, you know, I just don't know what to do with myself. And then the camera pans up, and it's Alan Tunic. Alpha is back. And Alpha says, no. The sad part is the ending, and kills the guy. So then flash forward to where I started the review. Echo goes into this situation that she's supposed to be in with this guy and that's the first time that we see that she doesn't even need the chair anymore she can just access imprints at will because she does it before they even get in the van but she goes in and sees the guy killed and that's the only time that the imprint seems to have an effect on her is in trauma situations and she's just crying and crying and crying can't snap herself out of it well the dollhouse mainly Topher and Langton discover a pattern a disturbing pattern and that is that all of and Ballard as well Paul as well they all discovered that all of Echo's long-term romantic engagements except one have been killed. They don't know who it is until Sierra comes back from an engagement and is about to sit down in a chair and she's, you know, doing the, the whole old time woman lingo way of talking like, I've been done by a man, wronged by a man so many times I've lost count that whole character and she sits down and she said yeah I'll take the treatment quite frankly I'm glad to be rid of him I never want to hear that despicable man's name again Alpha so that is how the dollhouse figures out that it's Alpha behind everything they realize that all of Echo's long term romantic engagements have been killed except for one which is the computer guy who recreated the day his dead wife was killed that we saw in season one. It turns out now, however, that this guy has finally moved on and is actually engaged to be remarried and hasn't called Echo to be his ex-wife in over a year's time. So he's clearly dragged into a situation he doesn't want to be in. He's dragged into the dollhouse and Echo wants him there because she wants to protect him. So meanwhile while all this is going on after failing to stop the previous killing by Alpha Alpha manages to get into the dollhouse. He's up into its office he uses the remote wipe device that Topher created, except he's tampered with the tech and actually enables all active dolls to be imprinted with the same personality. Echo, of course, isn't affected by this because she is now just like Alpha but better. So she goes and stops the attack, and in order to do so, she has to reveal her true self to Adele. So Adele now knows who Echo is, which is not fun. But here's the really sad and disturbing part. Not just out of the character, because in every episode beside Epitaph 1, which I'll get into in a second, because I do have a little bit of a bone with that. But in every episode we've seen besides Epitaph 1 in Season 1, he is disturbed. You know, Alpha is disturbed. He is beyond help and beyond cause, beyond approach. That's not what makes this episode stick out. What makes this episode stick out is the reason that this is called Love Supreme and the reason that, sorry, case keeps sliding on me, the reason that Alpha has 
targeted all of Echo's past long-term love engagements is because in his mind, although they love the imprint that they've ordered, they obviously don't love Echo. She loves, she feels true love and true commitment for all of them, but they have no idea who she is. And Alpha has clearly never gotten over Echo. And how far does he take it? He realizes that Echo is in love with Paul, and Paul is in love with Echo. Because the one thing I didn't talk about from the last one, Meet Jane Doe, was the fact that they are very close now, Paul and Echo. They are more than just handler and useful doll personality. They are very much in love. And Paul was such a gentleman that he refused to sleep with Echo the entire time they were alone in that house, even though Echo clearly wanted to. And the reason I didn't mention it in the last episode is just because of how important it is to this episode because Echo kills Paul. Or excuse me, not Echo kills Paul. That makes no sense at all. Alpha kills Paul. Sorry. Got a little on sun side there. But Alpha kills Paul because he tries to get in Paul's brain and figure out why Echo chose Paul over him. So this is an incredibly gut-wrenching, emotional episode. You know, he had it out for Paul the entire time. Alpha did. He was never after the computer guy long-term romantic imprint. He was just going to be a victim to try to get to Paul. So, he's trying to get Echo for himself. Obviously, it didn't work. Echo's just devastated because Paul's brain has been wiped clean. He's not really, quote-unquote, dead, but he's dead for all intents and purposes. He has no brain at all. So, yeah, very, very hard episode to watch. The acting and the death from all the characters is absolutely tremendous. Even that of Adele, who's clearly more on the Rossum side than the good side at this point. Even she is affected by it. And it was just really, really hard to watch. But it makes it one of the greatest episodes in the show's history. So that is episode 7. Of Love Supreme. Excuse me, episode 8 of Love Supreme. This is reality according to the Razman. And Razman style, it's not just a catchphrase, but a way of life.